this is um uh, as it says on the tin my life as a residential surveyor working in a small practice since qualifying with Saba. so uh, this presentation really is all about i'll talk to you a little bit about my life before um and what i was doing um i'll talk to you about Sava and why i chose the course uh and the the reasons of of, of why it suited me so well i'll talk to you about my experiences of of the training and my experiences of the assessment process um and also then i'll talk to you about what i'm doing now since i qualified um and what i'm involved in and i'll also talk to you about what future opportunities um achieving the diploma in residential surveying evaluation has led me to going forward um so that's a bit about the presentation and, and what we'll all cover so uh as i say any questions far away at the end and uh, we'll get rolling so uh, a bit about me that's me yeah uh, building surveyor and rics registered valuer um i am uh working for russell and turner so what does that mean well as i say i'm a building surveyor um predominantly my work now is building surveys home condition surveys and residential valuation work although i'm involved in a, a few other bits and pieces uh in, in that respect as well just going back one quickly that's kings lynn old hanseatic town port town uh it's got a lot of older buildings from the 16th century all the way up to modern stuff so for a surveyor of, of residential property um you get involved in all sorts that's a, a really fascinating place um to actually ply your trade once you've qualified um small practice what does that well yes i am um i work for russell and turner and um hillary grayson at sava she she described um Rustin Turner is a good old fashioned firm. And, and what does she mean by that? Well, I guess it's because we have various different facets um, to our actual um, uh, business. Uh, Rustin Turner itself, uh, we're architectural designers and, and CGI visualization specialists. So we deal a lot with um, all, all aspects of planning uh, and uh, design and visualization. Obviously, chartered surveyors, uh, a very successful independent estate agency in fact we're now the the uh, uh the best or shall i say the most successful estate independent estate agency in the town uh and of course we're rics registered valuers that's a shot of the team there so you can see uh, uh, the group of us and, and where we are um you'll also see at the bottom of each slide um that we have uh Russell and turner on the left that's obvious and allied surveyors and valuers on the right what does that mean? Well, um, for the surveying arm of, of, of Russell and Turner, we're a, a, a member branch of, of Allied. Allied is a cooperative, and uh, it means that we're lucky enough to to um, to be able to service work through a, a large national company. Uh, why is that good? Well, Allied itself gives you access to a lot of the larger panels, as is, as they're called. Panels being some of the uh, the larger uh, uh valuation work that we can we can achieve so um for the high street lenders if you like um we're able to service locally uh the residential valuations for a lot of the high street banks and um some of the big uh, uh corporate lenders um so that's a another string to the bow of of, of being in a small business and, and being part of a cooperative of allied um, so yeah, a bit briefly really about why I ended up here and becoming a building surveyor. Um, I was previously uh, a lettings manager uh, running a, an independent lettings business in Norwich. Um, I did that for about mm, 10 years before I um, qualified uh, as a surveyor and that was fine. But um, really in sort of 2016, um, life was looking uh, a little bit bleak, shall I say, for the independent letting agent. And I think... Um, uh, at the time, um, the government were trying to bring in a lot of measures to, to perhaps restrict buy to lets, um, to, to open up the housing market for uh, uh, first time buyers, especially. Uh, and as a result of that, it had an impact upon um, the business that I was in uh, and, and also the opportunities that were, I could see going forward. And uh, what I could see is, is a, a tightening of the ship, if you like, um, not too much opportunity for independent lettings uh, and much more success 
belonging to the high street and the multifaceted branches who were dealing with sales as well as lettings it was then uh, a much more difficult process and uh, harder to make a dollar shall we say so um i needed to sort of look around and find something that i felt uh, could could either uh, grow the business uh, which the managing director at the time wasn't interested in doing particularly so um we or i started looking for myself and that's what happened next really so i sort of started to look around for opportunities for me personally and thinking about what could i do next what would be my opportunities bearing in mind uh, i'm working full-time i've got two children um so i need to be um earning money um i can't afford to go back to full-time education um and funnily enough as i was sort of doing the searching round, i had an email come through for the property industry i which is a sort of a free sort of daily email if anyone's familiar with it you get and it said have you ever thought about being a, a residential surveyor and it was from sava and it wasn't at the time something that I'd particularly considered. Um, I didn't really know too much about it, if I'm totally honest. So I did a bit more research and um, started to dig a bit deeper into it. Um, and that was the, really the moment that it all started for me. Um, I spoke to Sean Lister at Starver, and I was lucky enough to have a one-to-one -one -one meeting with him. And um, uh, he was uh, uh, he gave me a really sort of open and honest and frank conversation about uh, Sava and the course and what it involves and you know how much it costs um, and I attended also then after that an open day and um, uh, and managed to speak to lecturers uh, members of Sava uh, as well as uh, other surveyors to find out if it was something for me so um there were sort of three reasons, if you like, why the course uh, ticked boxes for me. And, and I'll sort of come to these later on as well. But um, there are three really important sort of key things that that, that, that it works for for me. Uh, number one, it had to be part time. As I mentioned, I'm working full time. I can't afford to go back to full time education. So I needed something if I was going to qualify to something new that could work alongside my existing job um, that I, I would able, be able to fit in. That was the first thing. Number two, and it needed to be vocational. Um, I really wanted something that I could hit the ground running with. Um, I didn't want something that um, I would have to perhaps take a step back or um, you know go be get back to the beginning, if you like. I, I wanted something where I was qualified and I could just move on in whichever direction I wanted to. That was really important. And the third thing was, if I was going to commit anything uh, in terms of my time, energy. Uh, and funds into something I wanted it to present with me with opportunities um, going forward so I didn't want it just to be the end game I want I saw this as an opportunity to move forward into something else which could lead to further specialisms or further qualifications really um, and for that reason Sava ticked all three of those boxes um, and in the end that's exactly the reason that I did choose to go on the Sava course so um, I joined the course September 2017. Uh, seems a long time ago, even though it's not. Uh, and at this point, perhaps um, before I started the course in the September, between me deciding to do the course and having further conversations with Sava, um, I got myself a mentor. Um, and this was a gentleman in Norwich called Ian Mills, who's a chartered surveyor and, and valuer. And I, that was really important to me at the time because it gave me access to uh, different types of property it gave me access to the different styles uh, and it gave me access also as well to the different seeing the different types of inspection and surveys that were involved in becoming a residential surveyor so i was able then alongside the first part the first year to to, to go out and see that um and so that really sort of dovetailed nicely for me really um in in terms of uh, learning uh, alongside uh, the mentoring so uh, i found it a, a very valuable experience um yeah and to be honest i mean it was um a really really great experience year one probably slightly different now because i know a lot of it's being done virtually um because of the current restrictions but at the time we did the old-fashioned way which was um you know we turned up to birmingham twice uh you know for two days twice a month and um enjoyed ourselves as you can see, there's a photo of my group there in the pub, um, and uh, it was a really good experience. Um, the, the course uh, content was really informative. 
Uh, you get a lot of information given to you that you have to take away before and after um, to really get, get the benefit out of it. And um, it, uh, it, it, it worked really nicely. And, and to be honest, the first year sort of flew by. The course really isn't that boring as Alex Griffiths there, who's a qualified surveyor now, is showing you. Um, that was just after perhaps a heavy night in the pub, or it might have been a less interesting topic uh, for him. But even so, in all seriousness, um, it's a, it, it, was a, it was a fantastic year. And um, it does get you really ready for the, uh, the, the second phase, if you like, of the, of the whole process, which is, um, which is assessment. So moving on then, year one done. You've done all your learning. <coughs> all the course lecturers have provided you all the tools that you need in order to get out there and, and complete assessment. And um, I know one of the first things that um, that um, you, you sort of think about is, is is the amount of work involved. And one of the first things that people say to me in that regard is, um, is it really as, as, as tough as, as sort of they make out on year one? And I suppose the honest answer is, is Yes, it is tough. And if you look at it as, as one big hole, um, it's, it seems, you know, quite intimidating the amount of work that you do have to do to qualify um, because it is a level six qualification at the end of the day. It's a degree. Um, but the great thing is about Sava is, is that um, it does break it down nicely to you and you're able to achieve things. And it is little and often. And in fact, I think um, the first day of or the last day of um, train uh, of, of year one, if you like, which was introduction to assessment when you sort of left to get on with it. Um, you, you're introduced to your assessor and my assessor um, gave me some really good advice on day one. And that was, he said, John, he said, um, in order to make this successful for you, he said, two pieces of advice really is little and often and really just, you know, try and do um, something every day if you can. And that really sort of, um, uh, sat in my head, if you like, it burnt in my brain, as Larry Russon, one of the course lecturers, would tell you. Um, and I, that's what certainly what I try to do. Um, you try and, you know, carry on with it. You just do little bits each day, even if you've only got half an hour to organise some photos for your next assessment or do some reading on your next question that you're going to answer or anything like this. Just try and sort of chip away at it all the time. And the great thing about the, the actual assessment process is you've got like this... Um, like, um, uh, like a rev counter almost from from naught to 100 percent and each time you pass a module or an aspect of um, your assessment you can see it going up so from naught percent each time you just see it gradually going like this so you can set yourself targets and you can easily get yourself and see yourself creeping up that um, creeping up that levels all the time and um, uh, before you know it I think um, you know it was um, it was nearly done um so advice really for anyone who has signed up or is going into that 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 period i would say um um number one get to know your mentor well um be on a be on good terms with them um because it's really valuable experience that they can give you um don't try and kid them because they're really experienced surveyors who who do know their who do know their eggs and um if you miss something or you make a mistake you're best off just being honest about it um, and thirdly, just really immerse yourself in the whole process from day one. I think the, the old adage, you only get out of something what you put in, is very true in this case. Uh, the more the more you read, the more you understand, the more you, for me, it was the more you see, you get out there and look at stuff, uh, the, the better you'll become. And um, yeah, uh, uh, before you know it, it, um, it can be done. Uh, my assessment process lasted just over 10 months, to be honest. By the time then I had to do an ethics module right at the end and fill out an application form. By the time I got my RICS membership card in my hand, I think it was 11 months. Um, and yeah, the whole thing was done and dusted really in that period of time. And then you're, you're good to go. Now, you remember I said about the three things about what's important to, to me in terms of qualifying. Second one being uh, it would have to be vocational, i.e. you had to hit the ground running then um, it certainly was that for me um, because day one, um, I did not on this particular property you'll see a picture with, by the way, but day one I was doing home condition surveys uh, in my own name. I was doing a, a, the, the Saba home condition survey for, for live customers. And the great thing about that whole assessment process was that I felt entirely ready by the time I'd submitted my last 
piece of work that what I was actually going out and doing for real then uh, was actually easier than what I was doing for assessment because the work was slightly less in terms of all the additional information that you have to provide to your assessor. So um, as a result of that, I think you, you can then provide really excellent reports for your clients because you know you're ready for it so yeah post qualification day one home condition surveys um building surveys which is also called like a level three survey if you like uh they're a slightly more complicated uh piece of work uh your inspection regime is not really vastly different but the amount of information that you provide your client is a lot more in depth and a lot more detailed and as a result of that uh, I wasn't quite ready for that day one, but luckily um, I work at Rustin Turner and, and Larry Rustin um, uh, is, 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 you know, is a, an expert in the field. Um, he was able to, 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 to assist me and we used to do building surveys together. And he said the best way he said of, uh, of us learning building surveys, he said, I'll start off doing this much. You'll start off doing this much. And then gradually we'll do that. And then we'll do that and then you can sign off the reports and yeah after a year a year and a bit i was signing off building surveys under the under his tutelage so that was really great and it's a continuing learning experience now and i'm lucky enough to still go out and do building surveys with him um and and, and hope to do so for a very long time um i'm also involved in specific defect reports now that's where you look at a specific element of a property. Uh, recent examples of specific defect reports I've been involved in is a new build property where uh, the roof coverings have been laid incorrectly, uh, a garden wall that which they needed to understand whether it needed to be rebuilt or just uh, repaired, um, and someone with a five-year-old house in, with timber windows wanted to understand uh, what was wrong with those, why they had so much rot in them. So, you know, looking at specific elements, and they're really interesting reports. Valuation, um, something when I was doing the course, I didn't think I would be particularly interested in. I thought I was wanting to be a building surveyor and that was it. But actually, valuation is different to surveying and it's very interesting and provides you with an additional armory as well. So you're able, you know, it's a lovely mix of the day to be able to do some of uh, some survey work and some valuation work, different skills. Uh, but again, the, the course uh, gives you the information you need that if you did want to go out and be predominantly value based, then you've, you'll, you'll have no problem from day one being able to do that, um, which is really good as well. And luckily as well, as I say, working in a small practice, I'm assisting other surveyors. That's other chartered residential surveyors, uh, my colleague Ed uh, and also uh, my colleague Giles, uh, who do also both commercial work as well. And I'm also lucky enough to be exposed to some of the commercial elements as well. So uh, that's really good in terms of of how we're going. Uh, as I said as well, um, the three things, if you remember, the third one is the gateway. Uh, does it give you a gateway to further qualifications? Well, it does. There's a picture of Larry there. Uh, I originally took that because this slideshow was going to be at the careers fair last year, but um, uh, due to the restrictions that were under, uh, it uh, has been rescheduled and I knew Larry was going to be there. So I just wanted to find the most awkward picture I could on my camera of him. And that's what I've come up with. So uh, hopefully I will not I will still have my chance next year at the careers fair for that. Um, so continuing to learn all the time about these different things. Other key things that I can uh, I, and I'm looking now to do. The first one is the assessment of professional competence or your APC, that's to get from the associate RICS membership to full chartered status. Uh, why is that important to me? Well, because with the valuation work I was just talking about, it gives you the option or the opportunity to sign off uh, more complex reports uh, and, and more specialist valuation work in your own name. For example, um, houses in multiple occupation. Um, we're involved a lot of those in, in like student areas like Norwich, um, as well as sort of bigger and, and more complex uh, valuation cases. Um, so that's a key thing for me uh, that I'd like to, to take forward. And also potentially there, party wall surveyor, uh, MFPWS, a member of the faculty of party wall surveyors, that stands for. Uh, and that's another uh, string to your bow as a, as a residential surveyor. You can in, be involved in, in in party wall work, and that's another qualification to, to run alongside. So that's really good. Uh, just recently as well, um, the Diploma in Residential Survey and Evaluation gives you the opportunity not only to be a member of the uh, uh, associate member of the RICS, 
direct entry without uh, further uh, requirements of qualification, but you can also now um, uh, become a member, uh, an associate of the Chartered Association of Building Engineers, which I've also done. Uh, and that's really give, and that gives you some really fantastic content. And uh, I would also encourage you to have a look at, at that, both their websites as well for some further information on both of those uh, associates. And uh, as I say, it's the diploma itself that gives you direct entry in that. And that's just an application and a fee once you've qualified to get both of those um, uh, letters after your name, if you like, and access to some fantastic content. So that's why it all works for me in a nutshell and a whirlwind tour of my last three years. Um, and, and, and I hope you're still awake out there. Um, so, yes, as I said, 20 minutes ish. That's not bad. Um, and happy to answer any queries or questions that come up. Don't be shy. Send them through on the chat and I'll do my best to to answer them for you. Um, and uh, more than happy, as I say, to answer anything about surveying or the qualification. And Helen's also on hand here this evening to be able to um, answer any Sava type technical questions that you may have that are, have really been burning at you for the last 20 minutes. Um, so feel free to, 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 to send something through. Um, that picture there, by the way, just while we're waiting for a few questions, is is a picture of me on a, on a building survey with said Larry Russell. And um, I was uh, currently just testing windows. And uh, as you can see, probably from the angle of that casement, um, it um, was a bit wonky. And uh, rather than help me fix it straight away, uh, being a good friend or a good man that he is, Mr. Russell reached for his camera first and his tool second. So, but that's an example of the fun you can have. Don't worry, we fixed it and it was fine, but Windows still needed some work. We got that written in the report. So um, yeah, there we go. So yes, questions here they come. Thank you very much, guys. And Simon, thank you very much. What did the assessment year actually look like? Um, Simon, well, um, for me, um, the assessment year I sort of committed, I was still working full time throughout the uh, assessment period. Um, and what I did is that uh, um, I did sacrifice some stuff uh, in terms of hobbies and time away and all that sort of stuff and used holidays to do it. But for 10 months, I was trying to do bits and pieces. And on a sort of week to week basis, midweek, I'd come home from work. I'd perhaps have a little look at um, what I was doing at the time, maybe write a chapter for my for my next presentation uh, or my next assessment, I should say, uh, maybe do some reading or you know, something as simple, if I only had half an hour that night just to rename the photos or organize them in such a way that they're ready to be sent through, because sometimes you're sending through 300 photos on a on, a, on an assessment. So I'd be doing that sort of stuff and then commit at least sort of one day a week, if I could, at weekends to actually sitting down and really grinding out as much as I possibly could. Um, but it is really surprising that if you can continue just to do bits and bits and bits and chip away, chip away, that your assessments still flow. And I always try to have something ready to go or I was working on something ready to send because once your assessor sends you stuff back with questions, you could potentially have something ready to send while you're then working on those questions or always have something there to do would be my top tip for it or always be working on something that you can then get commit. Keep your, keep your assessor busy. That's the best thing, Simon. But yeah, sort of bits and pieces throughout the week. Pull a few late nights if you can. I tried to because I wanted to get it done and, and I certainly just sort of threw myself into it on a weekend and did as, as much as I possibly could. Obviously, bearing in mind that I've got a family and two children, so there is still a balance. I wasn't hitting it full time. Um, so, yeah, thanks for your question. Good question. Thanks, Jake. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks as well. Thank you, Jar. I think that's how you pronounce it. I hope I got that right. Thank you. Uh, Jake, what do you most enjoy about your role as a residential surveyor? Uh, good question. Um, Jake, probably the variety in my work. As I said, building surveys, home condition surveys, valuation, queries, specific defects report. Um, so there's a variety in your tasks. Sometimes I'm in the office. Um, sometimes I'm out of the office. You know, I get a nice variety in my day. I get to see different things. I get to meet different people. Um, so no two days are the same. So I would suggest it's fantastic. Plus, as well, I've discovered that you can eat more. And that's because when you do building surveys, you're on your feet most of the day. Therefore, you're burning calories. Therefore, you can eat more food. 
which is also quite a good thing. I quite like that. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, it's a very good, um, very good for your well-being because you, you know, long, short sight, walking, exercising, thinking a lot, always focused, and the variety. So I think that sort of covers it. And as a result, Jake, I would definitely say I would recommend doing it because um, it's a fantastic career. And um, I never wake up and think I've got to go to work today. M my days are always pretty good of course you get days where you're like Ugh. but most of the time it's yeah great looking forward to it so i hope that i hope that answers your question thank you samantha hi hi john i'm 47 is it too late for me to start something like this were there any older students on your course samantha definitely not too late there was three four probably four or five i'm going to say five um people who were older than me i had a, a retired helicopter pilot uh he was 60 uh a used car salesman lou he was i'm going to say mid 50s and two or three other people who were uh, in their 50s who were doing it and you know what age comes and with and so does experience and um i think there's probably a lot you can um you can enjoy or pull from other experiences as a, 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 a you know you're not old samantha right at 47 i mean we're just in our prime really so you'll be fine with that I think so yeah definitely not too old I would absolutely think that you're probably at a perfect age uh, but good question hope I've answered it Akas hi um, are you able to differentiate from quantity surveying and residential surveying yeah completely different um, there is a slight crossover I do some work um, uh, nowadays for um, uh, stage inspection so if you've got say smaller scale local builders making developments of maybe one to sort of four or five houses and they want to gradually release uh funds from the from the lender as they get to different stages um of their development then you have to go along and assess where they are and make some various uh d discussions and, and and decisions about about that in terms of valuation that's as close as i get to quantity surveying uh bread and butter wise it's 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 really pre-purchase surveys and valuation work uh, rather than actually the, the actual quantity surveying stuff. It's a different, really, uh, the qualification is not for quantity surveying. Um, it's more for the residential surveying. But as I say, there is a slight touch on it, but not really much, I guess. I, 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 hope, I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. How much, how much hours do you need to put in during year one? Uh, up to you, really. I know people who didn't put any hours in and they struggled a bit. Um, but I also knew people who, you know, did all the pre-course work, spent time with it, read around the subject and did the post-course work. And it makes the difference. Um, so it's up to you, really. How many hours did I put in? So I had two training days a month. Uh, and then I, on that, I would say I was doing let's say five to six, seven hours a week, roughly, reading around, doing tasks, sometimes more, sometimes a bit less, really. Um, but I put more in into year two because, as I say, I want to just get qualified quickly so or as quick as I could realistically. Um, but year one, as I say, the more you put in, the, the, the better it will be and the more thorough understanding that you'll get um, because there's various facets that you do need to be familiar with. and. The more you can call on in year two, the better. So I hope that answers that question for you. Uh, thanks, Simon. Thanks, Jake. Akas, uh, on the back of completing that this diploma and applying for roles, would someone degree level be more suitable for residential surveyor compared to a Sarva qualified surveyor? Mm, very much depends. Um, Akas, I would say go to the careers day. Uh, the Sarva qualification is held in very high regard amongst um a lot of people in the industry that simple um i can't really comment on someone who's just come out of university or or just completed a degree i can only comment on what i've seen and experienced and uh, for me i know the Sava qualification uh, does does create a lot of interest uh, amongst potential employers and and as i say the the careers day will prove it you don't have to take my word for that go along to a careers day i think it's in march next year and um 
just go and have a chat with people. And it's a, and I would say this to everyone basically who's on here at the moment, you know, please go along to that careers fair. It's really interesting. Just see what other people say. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll find that that's true, but yeah, it's a, it, it really does. It, you hit the ground running with the Sava qualification and that there's always an opportunity there amongst, um, amongst the employers for you to have a go. So um, yeah, good question. Thanks for that. Uh, Samantha, thanks. Um, yeah. Um, there was, yeah, there was uh, in my course, one, two, three, I think there was three, uh, three women. Um, uh, one of the, one of the people who I got on best with was, was um, uh, Kaylee Eccles, who's from um, uh, Cardiff in Wales. Um, and um, she's qualified and she she had a baby as well while doing the, the assessment stage. So there you go. Um, and um, yes, there, there is, there's a lot more. And, and I certainly think that people such as Marion Ellis on the Surveyors Hub, um, which is a great group on Facebook, if anyone else is not on that and would like to join, that gives you a real insight into uh into surveying and there's plenty of content on there um and also about women in surveying as well so um yeah there is samantha there was uh i wouldn't say it's a 50 50 balance uh, uh not certainly from my experience but certainly a fair share and on linkedin um there there is plenty of uh, uh women uh doing the roles valuation as well as um the surveying work so yes um definitely um a, a, a worthwhile thing whatever your sex or age in my opinion um also if anyone speaking about linkedin if anyone does want to look at me on linkedin um there's me on there where am i here yeah that's me on there so john stewart give me a shout on uh, linkedin i'm more than happy to, to answer any further questions or queries that you do have on there um and um uh you know if you want any further advice feel free to to connect up on there and i'll do my best so uh thank you very much um jake hi again uh, you've mentioned the apc route and becoming chartered would you say the sava diploma is a good platform yeah definitely because you've got experience from day one and the qualification although it's not the same as say an rics registered full-time degree if you're going straight into university as a 18 year old um you can work towards it with that and i believe currently looking on the surveyor hub that uh, Marion Ellis is, is currently looking at pathways for um, someone to, to or a direct pathway for a Sava graduate. So watch that space because there may be different ways of achieving that uh, in the near future. Uh, and it's something that you should be at, or, or can do anyway. Um, and we'll be able to do perhaps more easily going forward should you go uh, and choose the Sava route. Hopefully that's all good, Jake. Cheers. Thanks, Akas. Um, what would you say? was your biggest challenge when on the course and also once carrying out your job? Good question. Biggest challenge on the course um, was the assessment and towards the end of the assessment as it gets tougher um, and just keeping the momentum going is, is a key thing for that. Um, so yeah, some of you, there's a couple of really tricky assessments that just require, you know, reflection and thought in order to get through them. And uh, you just need to just, sometimes when you're challenged on stuff, um, you just need to sit back and think, don't be too rash in your responses to your assessor and, you know, read around, make sure your responses are thorough and succinct and um, you'll be fine with that. Uh, biggest challenge now on the job, Depends. Oh, I went. I went to one this week. I, I I did a building survey on my own on a grade two listed property in, in a conservation area. Originally, seventeenth century it was, and there was so many elements to it. And as you walk through the front door, you just think, "Oh bloody hell! Oh, there's loads here. What are we gonna do?" But you just break it down and you take your time. So, um. That was a challenge, but one after an hour of walking around and just thinking about it, you really get your teeth into and enjoy. So it's it, there's always challenges that are coming up um, and yeah, valuation or survey. And I think, you know, you're always presented with houses or, or, or tasks that are perhaps outside your comfort zone, but that's what makes it fun for me. So that's great. So I hope that answered that question. And um Another one, Akash, yeah. Finally, how did you find receiving support when you may have been struggling? Great. Um, there's always someone on hand at Sava to help you with anything that you need. Um, 
not necessarily to answer the technical questions you've been asked for your mentor, but um, if you needed help with something uh, administration wise, the training or anything like that, you'll find that Sava provides you with some really great support. That's the first thing. Number two, I had a mentor, so I always felt that I could rely on someone and ask them questions. Uh, number three, your assessor is not uh, uh, an enemy. He's a he's someone there who's trying to coach and cajole and get the best out of you. And you can always find um, support from your from your assessor in that way. And in year one, with with your with your training, um, I found the assessors to be excellent and approachable. And you know, if you had queries or questions. You know, they give you their email addresses and you can always drop them a line and ask them. And um, so I would suggest that I always felt uh, very well supported, both from from Sava, my mentor, my assessor and and, and also from the trainers themselves. So um, it was a, a, a really uh, thoroughly uh, enjoyable experience overall, as much as, you know, gaining a new qualification can be. Um, so, yeah, no issues with that at all, Akaz. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, I think that's it. I think we've answered all the questions. Uh, none for you tonight, Helen, I don't think. I think you've got away with it. I don't think anyone's got any Sava technical questions. You must have just answered them all before or something, have you? I think. But, yes, everyone, um, thank you very much for all your time this evening. I appreciate you signing in and joining in. And um, and I appreciate all the, all the feedback and questions that you've given. Thank you very much for that. Um, as I say, um, if anyone is thinking about uh, the course, then, um, you know, and, you, and you're not sure if you want any more further advice, please give me a shout. For me, um, it ticked all the boxes. Uh, it's got me where I'm doing now. Um, and as I said to you at the start, it did what it said it would do on the, on, on the, on the tin. I, I got a qualification out of it that gave me the opportunity. So that's great. And as I say, see you perhaps at the careers fair in March next year and uh, it'd be great to, to meet anyone who who, who who needs any further assistance with it so thanks everyone i'm gonna sign off now and um say ta-da